Most of us today are familiar with the idea of fight or flight, and now perhaps more nuanced, freeze, flee, fight, and recently fawn response to threats. And we have often heard of how it's a lower brain, small part of our brain, two little lobes called the amygdala that trigger that threat response. And it's an evolutionary adaptation, of course, to the power of our prefrontal cortex, our thinking brains to work through problems, but sometimes in a speed or pace that could expose us to danger, at least over the course of the many millennia and generations of human existence in more wild circumstances, it's useful to have something that can quickly see a pattern and cause us to react in a way that will protect us, even if it's wrong. But unfortunately, you know, in today's modern society, threats like a snake in the path or a lion in the bushes is not quite the threats that we typically face. And that freeze, flee, fight, or fawn response may often be less than effective in dealing with modern nature of conflict. Of course, our brains are going to do what our brains are going to do. So knowing what causes us to be more likely to have the amygdala take over is a first step in gaining an ability to move forward productively in conflict, to pause, to find that space. So knowing, for example, that when we're hungry, angry, stressed, or tired, those conditions will cause our amygdala to more quickly take over. Or when there are certain issues of disrespect, identity, exclusion, or threat, issues that will also cause our amygdala to perceive a threat and cause an immediate reaction can help us to find the space to not react. Because neuroscience has also shown that the neurochemical reactions to fear and anger, the neurochemicals that are produced in when those emotions spring up take at least 90 seconds to resolve. So we we are, if we do anything within the first 90 seconds of feeling fear or anger, it's going to be essentially under the influence of chemicals and may not be our best response to a complex situation. So giving that, knowing that reaction is, is going to happen, giving ourselves an outlet, whether it's box breathing or a more extended sending an email, right, typing up an email and deliberately deleting the to addressee so you don't send it inadvertently. Anything that gives us time to let those chemicals dissipate is going to give us a potentially more effective ability to respond with our prefrontal cortex. And a final idea to pause in conflict, to give ourselves the space and to give ourselves the confidence that we can pause, is to try to essentially tell our prefrontal cortex that, hey, it's going to be worth it for you to take control here, pause things, because you're going to be able to solve things better. For example, just yesterday my phone crashed and I spent a whole evening fretting and fussing over trying to fix it and I eventually told myself you're going to be better at this in the morning and sure enough I was. So give ourselves the ability to recognize we're going to have a reactive response when we feel threatened in conflict and the tools to move forward.